Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're looking at clear evidence for the resurrection of Christ. We've just been looking at the history of um, of scholarship on the historical Christ. We got to the atheist position, and we're just going to finish off with one more atheist, Dr. Richard Carrier. Bayes theorem. In a debate, James White asked Dominic Crossan about bias in historical method. Dominic Crossan replied, we have presuppositions, but we also have data. The resurrection debate, Crossan and, and Borg versus White and Rayner, this debate took place on board ship in 2005 in the Gulf of Alaska. U Channel, Dr. Orkley, 1689. He implied that we can get to the historical data, that is Crossan, even with bias. I agree with Crossan, but he failed to highlight, as Dr. White wanted to do, that our presuppositions in historical inquiry are a problem. Most of us, even scholars, are not aware how we shape the historical material to suit our agenda. What bias do you bring to the table? How are they shaping you as you look at the material? What steps have you taken to make your bias doesn't get in the way? What presuppositions still remain on the table when all said and done? As we have looked at the historical Jesus studies and the New Atheist, we all, uh, we all have to be more conscious of our bias, be more honest and upfront about it. If not, we will just go round in circles confirming what we want to believe rather than letting the evidence speak for itself. Scholars can try to trick the public into thinking they are more objective than they are. An example is a scholar who uses the Bayes theorem, such as the atheist Dr. Richard Carrier in promoting, proving Jesus rose from the dead. This theorem tries to show how the conditional probability of each set of probable causes for an observed outcome can be logically deduced from knowledge of the probability of each cause and the conditional probability of the outcome of each cause. To be fair, it must also be noted that evangelical scholars also use the Bayes theorem to prove their case for the resurrection. The Bayes theorem can be used by both sides to give the public the feel that what is being said is all scientific. Susan Hake, an atheist, has given a great lecture in warning us about using science as some authority to give our ideas more kudos than in reality. Science does not actually substantiate or, or remains neutral. Susan Hake, Six Signs of Scientism, Dr. Hake, sorry, talk at the... Rotman Institute of Philosophy at the University of Western Ontario on January 7, 2011. Engage sci is scientism the view that natural science is the most authoritative way at looking at the world and is superior to in other interpretations of life. We can see in the case of Dr. Richard Carrier that he already thinks Jesus is a myth, but he uses his base theorem to make people think he is being objective in his historical work. Bayes Theorem and the Modern Historian. Proving history requires improving methods, Dr. Richard Carrier. What Dr. Richard Carrier fails to tell people, the theorem is not used by most historians and is subjective in many cases when used for the historical task. The great difficulty, quote, about applying the theory is that it is often not at all clear what value should be given to the prior probability. David Bartholomew, statistician, page 17, Resurrection of Jesus, Mike Lacona, IVP. David Bartholomew, page 170, 117, same book. Thus, the Bayes theorem is subjective. Page 117, Dr. McLeod, virtually no historian used it. So what we've seen so far is we've just looked at the history of scholarship on the historical Christ. We looked at the general history of the 19th century up to the early 20th century. We looked at modern scholars in atheist and what they think and what we found is they're all biased and they're not seriously considering the historical task and trying to do it in an objective way.